Hi guys! Welcome to Fundamentals of User Experience Design, a Toots Plus Premium course. I'm Sarah Khan, and today we're going to have an introduction to user experience. Here's the agenda for what we're going to cover. We'll have an introduction to me, uh, a user experience definition, a bit of history, why this is important, how does it apply to websites, and then we'll have an assignment. So, who am I anyway? Since you're about to invest a few hours of your life listening to me talk, I thought you might like to know what my qualifications are. I'm the user experience engineer at AdZerk, which is a software as a service startup based in North Carolina. I studied information science at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and I've been practicing in the field for almost five years. So I've had a bit of real world experience, you might say. Hopefully enough to pass on a few good tips at least. So first, what is user experience? Here's a formal definition. User experience is the way a person feels about using a product, system, or service. In a nutshell, people have an experience when they use something, whether that something is a physical artifact, a software application, or a website. User experience design is the art and science of making that experience effective and satisfying. So what does this look like in practice? Um, also, kind of a side note, it's worth mentioning that user experience is commonly abbreviated to UX, so that's why you'll see that written different places. For example, you may have noticed in the intro slide that my job title is UX engineer. So what this means to my company is that I'm responsible for taking requirements from our VP of product and incorporating new features into our application in a way that makes the most sense and will make them the easiest for our users. I do this by incorporating information that we're gathering about our users in a variety of ways, as well as incorporating knowledge that I have about human computer behavior in general. I mix all that information up together and use a variety of techniques to plan out the feature and get it added to the application. And we'll go into that, the actual nitty gritty, in more depth in some later lessons. So here's a bit of history. The study of human-computer interaction first came about in the late 70s with the advent of the GUI, GUI, or the Graphic User Interface. Uh, before then, most computer people were computer scientists, programmers, and enthusiasts who didn't mind that the computer wasn't easy to use. They used the command line to do what they needed to do. So with the advent of the GUI, there was a rise in the idea of PCs, or personal computers, which meant anyone could have and use a computer, and that began to mean that a computer should ideally be easy enough to use so that anyone could have and use one. So in the early days, UXers were mostly known as human-computer interaction designers, and they worked with enterprise-level software on big industrial systems. The field has grown and evolved from there, always with the goal of making computers easy to use for humans. So how does this matter to you? Why should you care about user experience design? Think about any object that you use on a daily basis. I'm going to pick on my company's coffee maker for a moment. It has two separate on switches, it beeps before it's done, and basically people have a hard time figuring out how to use it. There have been multiple occasions where two people with master's degrees were gathered around this thing trying to figure out if it was brewing or not. Personally, I think that's a problem. That's not a good user experience. Contrast that with my French press. Admittedly, I'm a little biased, but I pour in water and coffee, press down the lever, and voila, coffee. These two objects are accomplishing the same thing, brewing coffee, but they're doing it very differently, and the user, in this case me, has a different reaction when using each. The stakes are pretty high when you're talking about user experience. In the very best cases, users will experience satisfaction or even outright happiness through interaction. The worst case, on the other hand, can be frustration, confusion, or even the user making the decision to stop using the object. If they're unhappy enough, they might tell their friends. If they love it enough, they might also tell their friends. Customer loyalty is often inversely proportional to how easy your product is to use. An easy-to-use product or website results in more money, whether you're counting in signups, conversions, or page views, it's really that simple. If you have any doubts, think about Apple. 
This is a company that has staked their entire business model on making things beautiful and easy to use. They might not always have the most features or even be the best quality on the market. I mean, think of the first iPhone. The, the camera on that phone was not very good and it didn't even stack up that well against other phones that were on the market at the time. But it was still the iPhone, it was still revolutionary because of other things. So the details matter. This is all well and good, you might say, but how does it apply to my website? Well, websites are just like any other artifact that people need to have interactions with. If it's difficult and unpleasant, they won't come back. Your website is competing not only with the websites of your direct competitors, but with search engines, news aggregators, social media sites, video sites, photo gallery sites, the list goes on and on. In short, you've got approximately six seconds to prove to your users that your site is easy to use and will help them achieve their end goal with a minimum of resources. The time of your users is your most precious resource. Here's something to consider. A pretty website is not always a usable website. Let me repeat that. If you get nothing else out of this screencast, I want you to walk away with this point. A pretty website is not always a usable website. So we're looking at Craigslist. Highly usable, ugly as anything. Well, I mean, it doesn't exactly make your eyes burn, but nobody I don't think would look at this site and say, oh, it's so beautiful. But Craigslist has a cult-like following of extremely enthusiastic users. In fact, uh, the community rose up in outrage when Craigslist tried to redesign it a few years ago. So you'll notice they may uh, make subtle tweaks, but they won't change those blue links. They will not touch this homepage. Craigslist is Craigslist. And now I'm going to contrast that with this website. Now watch this, because this infographic goes away pretty quickly. So you see, they have to give you directions on how to move and interact with this thing. Oh, and now it's being real slow. There we go. Okay, so this site features loads of pretty graphics, the latest JavaScript animations, and I personally find it a bit confusing. If you need to give your users a pictograph on how to use your site before the page loads, you may have a problem. Considering who their user base is, I'm not necessarily their target user. Um, even though I'm a fairly technic technical person, um, I think probably the uh, Tennessee Tourism Board's target user might be more the speed of, say, my father-in-law, who's um, very uncomfortable using a mouse or a trackpad. And in fact, when he moves his mouse to the edge of his mouse pad, he thinks he has to pick it up and move it back before he can scroll some more. So this interaction might not be ideal for their users. Sure, it's very pretty, but if it's frustrating people, that's uh, still not a good thing. Okay. So, time to go play around and try this out. So, we're going to go to another website. It's uh, simpleandusable.com slash simplify this. So, let's browse on over there. Simplify this. And this, Simple and Usable, is a great book to check out, by the way. So, what happened was the author got a new DVD player and found the remote to be just horrifying. So he made a list of all of the actions that have to be organized on this remote, which if you think about it, this is a very similar exercise to what you would go through to organizing actions on a website. So he gives you a blank remote and a list of the actions and challenges you. Can you do better? Think about the order that you would use these things in, how you would arrange them, how the remote feels in your hand, where you're going to be looking. So these are all, this is an exercise that's extremely relevant to designing a website or web application. So anyway, uh, have a look at the gallery. Take a stab at it yourself. Can you make an easier to use remote control? Is there value in this? What lessons can you apply to your own product? Okay, next time on Fundamentals of User Experience Design, we're going to cover lesson two, the anatomy of a user experience. This is Sarah Khan, and from all of us here at Toots Plus, thanks for listening.